Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm a YouTuber based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. If you're new to this channel, if you're seeing my face for the first time, you are welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for always coming back. I appreciate you. So, in today's video, I'm going to be answering the questions that I asked you guys to ask me concerning finance, okay? The one we did before was concerning dating and marriage. This one is concerning you know, it's all about finance, you know, finance in the home, savings, investments, and stuff like that. So, if you'd like to know the answers to your questions, then just keep on watching. Alright guys, so while I was looking at the questions, I realized that there are some questions that kept coming up. Uh, it was like people were asking the same questions in different ways. So I decided that before I start answering questions properly, I'm just going to give us a little breakdown of, you know, some basics, okay? So you guys need to pay me for this. You're meant to pay me for the information I'm about to download for you guys, okay? So yeah, I need to do like a brief crash course on savings and investment before I now answer questions so that, you know, I don't need to answer some questions over and over again because they came up a lot um yeah so about savings you guys i have a video on this channel about how to save money okay the title of the video is how to save money before the year runs out okay and i did that video with my husband so you guys should please go and watch it i'm going to link it here and i'm also going to leave it in the description box go and watch it it's going to tell you so much about how to save i got a lot of questions about how to save how do i save how do i save we answered basically everything in that video but right now i'm going to talk mainly about investment in that video remember my husband actually said that we we're going to talk about investment in the next video but where is the time so let me just talk about it alone um yeah so what is investment we all know what investment is right investment is basically allocating some money you know bringing out some money for you know a business or an idea with the expectation or in hopes that in the future we are going to make more money okay we're going to get benefits from our money in the future so that's basically what investment is in layman's terms so yeah things to consider before we choose a particular investment to put our money in okay so first of all you have to consider the level of risk involved okay so there are three levels of risk there's the high risk there's the medium risk and there's the low risk okay low risk is basically um, an investment that when you put your money there, you're pretty sure, okay, you can rest assured that nothing's going to happen to your money anytime soon. There's a very, very low risk of you losing your money, okay? So it's not like you can never, it's not, I didn't say no risk, oh, I say low risk. So the risk is very low. Um, different kind of low risk investments are your normal savings account, okay? Let me just put that one as investment, even though to me it's just trash, okay? So your normal savings account, if you put your money in your savings account, you're pretty sure that anytime you want your money, you'll get your money back. Your money is insured by Ancon. If you put your money in the bank, your money is insured by Ancon. So you're pretty sure that you're going to get your money back. But one thing you have to know about low-risk investments in general is that low risk investment give low returns okay the least the lower the risk the lower the returns the higher the risk the higher the returns okay yeah in, in you know in most cases so savings account what is on it i think two percent per annum per annum which is basically nothing it's almost like it's a joke so yeah it's only good for just keeping your money temporarily it's really not good for you to put as a long-term investment okay so yeah that's um for savings account so the next one is treasury bills okay i got a lot of questions about treasury because i mentioned it in one of my videos okay treasury bills is basically when the government wants to borrow money you know from its citizens but the government the government of a country decides to you know maybe they need money for some investment or for some infrastructure or for something and they don't have enough so they decide to borrow from their from its citizens the government borrows from its citizens and you know pays the citizens back some you know interest okay so treasury bills are usually short term and by short term i mean they are usually lower than one in fact treasury bills is usually less than one year okay so it can be one year this can be six months it can be three months it can be nine months but it's always less than a year for treasury bills okay and yeah the interest is really before at some point the interest was really high especially in nigeria most times when the government is really desperate for money the interest is usually high but when they are not really when they don't really need money that much the interest is sometimes four percent very very low okay so right now um the interest is really really low on treasury because that's why i, I even stopped but yeah basically sometimes it gets as high as 12 13 14 15 percent depending on the amount you're investing but right now it's very low so 
won't really, I won't really, um, I won't really advise you to go into treasury bills at this time because there are other ways you can get a higher percentage, okay? Yeah, so the next one aside that is government bonds, okay? Government bonds is almost like treasury bills, but it is a foreign currency. And in treasury, in government bonds, is it usually it's usually open to the outside um, world, not really its citizens. The citizens can participate, but government bonds are usually for the outside world, usually a foreign currency. Okay, and that one is more than a year. I think it's for four or five years. I'm not really sure. Please, I'm not a financial expert. So these are just things that I, I I think I know. I think I know. So let me not nobody should come here and start telling me this that is anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I think four or five years. I think it's just it's, it's it's longer than one year. Um, but I think you can get your returns in six months in 12 months you know so it basically it's in foreign currency and it's long term even though you can get your returns in six months your capital is going to stay for a longer time so it's actually a good option i'm actually considering going into it there's something they call euro bonds i'm actually considering going into it because it's something i want a long-term investment I, I like short-term investment because you know you're seeing your money sharp sharp but i also want something long term so yeah so like i said as you're considering low risk high risk and uh, medium risk also con con also consider um the term okay how long do you want your investment to see so there's short term there's medium term there's long term there's lifetime you know kind of investment and also you also have fixed deposits which you can do in the bank so the interest is usually higher than the normal savings account is also very low risk but fixed deposit too their interest is, is really really poor really really poor so it's something you do okay now when you're considering um types of investments to do as well also try and spread it out okay so depending on your risk appetite and i'll go into that shortly but depending on your risk appetite try and do a little of all or try and spread your money so do some low risk do some high risk and do some medium risk okay a lot of low risk are easier to liquidate okay a lot of low risk investments are easier to liquidate like your, your like your fixed deposit is easier to get your money back they might charge you something to to break your savings or your investment but it's easier to liquidate than that's easier to get your money your cash back okay than you know in other forms of investment so when you're considering think about it try and spread your money okay like i said the higher the risk the higher the returns but just ready to stomach the risk because <laughs> anyway i'll go into that um after this okay so yeah for the next one the next one is the medium risk medium risk investments are like your cooperative Osusu, is it Osusu they call it? Contribution, you know, Osusu, cooperative, uh, which other one? Crowdfunding, yeah, crowdfunding. Those are medium risk. But crowdfunding can actually fall between medium and high risk, depending on, you know, the company that is doing the crowdfunding or that is in charge of the crowdfunding, okay? So you have to be careful when you're doing crowdfunding. But generally, crowdfunding or social cooperative, where people come together to you know pull in funds to invest, is actually um, the risk is usually not as high as high risk, okay, but it's higher than um, low risk investments, okay. So now when it comes to high risk investments, what are your high? I hope you guys understand what I just said, Sha. Anyway, moving on, high risk investments. Yeah, these are the ones that people like to go and do. <laughs> And they cry in the end. Most people like this one, yeah, because it sounds very good to the ear. Especially if you're like a person that you're not patient, you want money sharp, sharp, you want to hammer, you want to show, you want to disgrace your enemies. These are the ones where they catch people very well, okay? And the first one is starting a business. Yes, yeah, starting a business is high risk, okay? Now, let's go to statistics. I read that 90% of startup businesses fold up okay okay next percent as far if 100 people start a business today in the next one year 90 of them are going to stop are going to stop doing their business and then it even continues like in next one or two years sometimes by three years by four years all of them have stopped sometimes by five years they're not even hearing about them again okay and it happens a lot in nigeria that's why i said in my last one of my videos that nigerians don't know how to do business okay it happens a lot so you will see that Businesses that you saw five years ago and your mind they were doing well five years later they're like where are they? They've changed their shop. Another person has taken over the shop. Another person has taken over the building. And they're no more hearing about them again. Okay, so yeah, so businesses starting a business is a very 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 high risk business. So you have to be careful. You have to do your due diligence. You have to be ready to put in the work, especially at the beginning stage. Why some people that say that oh, they're doing business and they're just 
they're just you know flexing and just like yeah you, you don't know what you're doing you're just joking there okay especially at the start of stage you are, you are going to actually need to put in a lot of work for your business not to crash in the next one year okay now for it not to crash in the next four five six ten years <laughs> a lot more work a lot more thoughts needs to go into it a lot more structure needs to go into your business if you want it to last long term okay so yeah so um starting a business is actually very very high risk the next one ponzi hey to me ponzi is not, should not be categorized as an investment but that's what people say you see they will some of them even have investment in the name the name of the ponzi will have investment okay so ponzi pyramid scheme is basically bring 10 people okay when you bring 10 people they'll collect money from 10 people and pay one person then the person will go then, they will, then that person will bring 10 more people they'll collect money from that 10 more people and pay that person the person will go sometimes those people go and then enter on that again and that's how they mostly lose their money if you notice most people who do ponzi schemes most people are losers in ponzi schemes okay even those who who won in the last ponzi maybe one ponzi was raining they they were the ones that chopped the money very well another one will come and collect that money from them okay i don't know that's what that's how it is the greed does not as long as you are greedy you are going to keep falling victim for you know such things okay so ponzi scheme is extremely 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 high risk okay extremely high risk then you also have gambling yeah some people see gambling as an investment okay gambling betting all the sports betting some people see it as an investment okay so yeah like i said the returns can be really really high you can do a game of 100 naira and get millions of naira okay so yeah that one although i don't do it personally but i've heard people that really cashed out big from it so it's very sweet to do but most people are losers in such games okay in gambling majority of people who, who go into it are actually losers okay only a very few percentage are, are going to go away with something at the end of the day i think they're not careful like i said they're going to lose it because it's kind of addictive the same thing with ponzi it's quite addictive okay so another one too is lottery yeah lottery is also like gambling to me yeah still the same concept anyway so that's it about low medium and high risk investment okay now other things to this to consider aside the type of investment and you know the duration of the investment another thing to consider is your risk appetite how much risk can you take i'm not saying how much risk are you willing to take i'm saying how much risk makes sense for you okay so before you think of how much risk you should you, you know you should take on as a person you have to think of so many factors your age how old are you are you 72 and you want to go and invest in 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 ponzi <laughs> okay are you 72 i am now thinking of ah i need to ah i'll soon retire or i've already retired i don't have money and you're not going to do ponzi <laughs> that means that you are you are you want to see jesus very soon <laughs> okay so yeah you have to consider your age the younger you are the younger you can actually you know be bold about to take on more risk than usual like but for me when i'm saying take on more risk i'm talking about legit businesses don't say take on more risk and be doing ponzi and, and stuff i'm talking about legit businesses okay so me as a person my goal is to teach my daughters to start you know doing investments and business from an early age that's one thing i wish i had done from an early age i want them to start so they can learn their lessons early they can make their mistakes early and they also have a chance of making it early too okay the earlier you start the earlier you can make it so yeah um, think about your age think about what that money is for what are you investing for are you investing in your children's education are you investing in trips are you investing in you know getting a house are you investing in you know medicals or whatever whatever it is you're investing that money for you have to also consider it before you think of the risk you're going to take before you consider taking some kind of risk okay because if your children's school fees you're not gonna put the money in one startup company that it's in now folds ha 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 they are going to send your children away from school so yeah think about it if it's your children's school fees look for more low risk you know or more legit businesses or more let me just say low risk not just say legit because most times they are all legit but yeah look for more low risk investment for things like children's school fees things that you cannot afford to lose the money okay but if you're investing something like trips you want to buy a car you want to buy you know you want to buy this jewelry or something then you can afford to take on more risk okay but you also have to think about how is your income coming are you a stay-at-home mom that is saving 20 naira from here 1000 from there 500 from here when you're not finished saving you now go and carry your money and put in ponzi <laughs> you know so how is the money coming okay what is your income level if you are you know considered poor by normal standards if you are considered poor or are considered average or considered you know not so rich then you know consider the less risky 
um, forms of investment. But for a rich man who you already have your basic needs, and, and that's another important thing, make sure you have your basic needs before you now start considering, you know, how much you want to invest, okay? So if you're a rich man that you have your basic needs, you have more than your basic needs, and you still have so much money left to invest, then you can take up, you can take on more risk, okay? And that's why the rich keep getting richer, because they have more money to play with than the poor people, and that's just fact of life. So I don't even know whether to say it's unfair or not, or not fair. It's kind of unfair, but that's just the truth. That's why the rich keep getting richer, because they have more money to play around with, okay? So it's easier for a rich man to put his money in a startup business, and if the thing crashes, it's like, onto the next, because he still has more money. But a poor man putting his money in a, in a startup business, if the thing crashes, his life is over so yeah think about the type of income that you're getting and you know how do you get that income then also think about your exposure okay if you're not a person if you're not a kind of person that has been dabbling into business before you're taking risks before you better you know test the waters before you jump in okay you have to test the waters with low risk investments okay you have to test the waters you have to educate yourself well enough before you jump into anything because you know, it can get very, it can be, it can be a life or death situation if you don't know or if you're not educated enough or if you're not knowledgeable enough about what you're putting your money in, okay? So yeah, so the next point I'm going to be talking about is mistakes not to make when you are, you know, thinking of an investment, okay? Number one mistake is not educating yourself enough about the industry you're investing in, you know, the company you're investing in, you're not doing your due diligence, you're not finding out who are they really, who, who are these people that I'm, I'm trying to give my money to to invest for me, okay? Even if you're using um, a third party investor, or I mean, or a middleman or whatever, or you're investing in a company directly yourself, or whatever the case is, you have to but invest money first in yourself, okay? Invest the time, invest the money to get the knowledge to understand the company better, to understand the business better, to understand how they are making their money, okay? Someone comes to you and tells you, oh, if you give us 5k, we're going to give you 10k. Ask them, how are you going to make this 10k, okay? Don't just take it, take their word for it. They tell you, oh, we'll make this 10k, you know, by doing investments here. And they ask them, which investment are you doing? I want to see it. A company that is legit will show you every freaking thing. Okay, a company that is just to show you this is what we're making, this, this is how we're going to make our money, these are our projections for the future. So those are things that you need to know before you go and carry your money, and, especially when you're a poor person, okay? Because some of you might be very rich, so your mind are like, I don't really care if I lose that money or not. But if you're a kind of person that, you might, you might not even be poor, but if you know that yeah, if that money goes, your heart is going to sink, you better spend time first, invest in yourself, invest in your knowledge, invest in your, you know, ability to discern, um, um, fake from real or something else, some crap. And the only way you'll be able to discern it is by, you know, studying and studying, study companies, study um, um, people's track records, study how investments work in general before you invest your money, okay? So that's one mistake that you should not make. Don't, make. don't go into anything that you don't understand, okay? Don't, don't, don't do it. I see people asking me, should I go into Forex? Do you know how to trade Forex? Do you know? Do you? Do you? <laughs> guys know who i just talk like now comment it down in the comment section do you know do you so don't wait when you're thinking of things to go to don't don't just jump into anything just because it sounds good okay make sure you do your homework so that's the first part the second thing is don't do business because of people's mouth too don't go and do any business or any investment because of people's mouth okay let me tell you what happens with people number one a lot of people lie yes they lie about how much they are making either because or they lie about or they exaggerate let me not say they lie maybe they exaggerate it or they don't tell you you know all the facts simply because they either want you to see them as ah they're really balling or they want to see they want you to see them as um they have sense you know i person very is a smart businessman a smart businesswoman so they will exaggerate the details of their business some people even do it so that you feel bad or you feel like, ah, my life is lacking. You see how this person is busy, you know, you know, making this progress. And me, I'm just here, just taking my 10 percent from the bank, eh? So that's number one. So don't take people's word for it. Just because you see that your neighbor, that your friend is now driving, you know, they're changing cars. You don't know how the cars are coming, okay? Don't say, ah, this my friend has a boutique and she can afford to be buying three cars in a year. Hey, let me to go open boutique, my dear. You will cry. <laughs> It will end in tears. <laughs> so yeah, we are thinking of doing, don't take people's word for it. Go and do your research, okay? Another reason why people lie or why people don't tell you the truth, why people don't, you know, why people exaggerate figures is because they don't know how to do business. Yes, let's let's shut this table once and for all. 
a lot of us Nigerians, especially in Nigeria, why you don't see lasting businesses in Nigeria. A lot of us Nigerians do not know how to do business. That's just the truth. We don't know how to do business. For instance, let me give you an example. You see someone who does, um, let me see now, what should I say? Um, you see someone who sells fabric, for, for instance, okay? She sells clothes, she sells fabric. Let us say she sells fabric, she sells, you know, Ankara, all these six years, three years. You someone who does that. You ask her, ah, this your business is doing well. How much is your profit? Okay? She'll tell you, ah, me, when I buy these clothes, I buy the clothes, five, seven. I sell it 10,000. My profit is 4,300. A whole 4,300. In your mind, you're like, wow. Oh, more. I need to go and do it. You will now go and liquidate all your assets and kite and go and buy fabrics. Forgetting that number one, she did not calculate her transport fare. Yes, some people don't calculate other things aside the money they bought the item. She didn't calculate her transport fare. She didn't calculate that, oh, on the road that she was going, she was thirsty, she drank, she carried uh, uh, money, bought bottle water. She didn't calculate that, ah, because she was in Balogun for, for three hours, she was very hungry, she had to go and buy food. She didn't calculate it. She didn't calculate the three hours she spent walking around Balogun because it, time is money. People don't know that time is money, okay? So you need to calculate how much, how much is your time worth, okay? So, and how you calculate how much your time is worth is if you were to pay someone to do that thing for you, how much would you pay the person? So, some people don't even calculate how much your time is worth, okay? So, they don't calculate the time you spent. They don't calculate their labor rule that had them to carry, you know what they call labor rule? Those people that carry barrel or carry things on their head. They don't calculate how much they pay the labor rule to carry the load from inside Balogun to, you know, where they will take bus. They don't calculate all those things. Then, you know, if you put all those things, if you factor it, they don't calculate things like nylon, things like bag, Things like advert that you did on online, they don't calculate all those things. You're not going to tell you they made four seven. So if you put, if you factor in all these things I just said now, you might see that the person's profit is like one thousand naira. So is it worth it for you? If worth it for you, then go ahead. But have all the details before you go ahead. Don't say ah no, she makes four thousand naira. Okay, for instance now, like, when I was making chin chin, okay, and all that. See, this video goes very long. I might, I might have to do a part two, okay? So I used to make chin chin from home, okay? Yes. I used to make chin chin and my chin chin is the best chin chin ever, ever, the best I've ever eaten, okay? <laughs> Take my word for it. So anyway, I used to make chin chin from home. Now, you see someone, part of the reason why I don't stop is because I realized that the profit margin was not worth it, okay? It wasn't worth it for me. For me, it wasn't worth it. At that time of my life, the profit margin was really, really poor for the effort I was putting into the chin chin, for the quality of my chin chin. The profit margin was really poor. And how did I calculate the profit margin? I didn't just calculate ingredients and that's it, no? I calculated the pots and pan that I use, yes, even though they were the ones that I've had in my house for donkey years. I had to calculate how much they cost, okay? Now, I didn't put the exact amount they cost in the market, but I did, I prorated the figures kind, kind of, I don't know to call it, is it prorated or what? Like, I, I did some calculations before I was able to arrive at a figure that was good enough to put as the price of my pots and pans. I also put the price of my gas, yes, even though the gas was the gas we used to buy every month for the house, but if I am using it for chin chin, I have to calculate the price of my gas. So if I was buying gas to make chin chin in a month, how much gas can I estimate that I use? Now I couldn't get the exact figures for all these things. Don't don't get me wrong. I couldn't get the exact figures, but I had to assign a figure to it, okay? So the gas you use. The plastic you use to package it, the time you use to cut the chin chin, because like I said, time is money. So if I had to pay someone to be cutting chin chin for me, how much would I pay the person? If I had to pay someone to be frying chin chin, how much do I pay the person? Okay, I calculated down to lighter. Yes, the lighter I used to light the, the gas because <laughs> that was even if it's just this amount of gas that, that went with me, you know, putting on my my gas cooker is something it was gas it was gas that would have been there before okay so even if it's matchstick you are using it's matchstick that you do not have to use but you don't use it because you're trying to do a business okay so by the time i calculated all these things including the time i spent you know advertising on youtube and um, on um, instagram and facebook i realized that the profit margin was really really low and i decided not to do it okay so when you hear someone telling you ah that i made teaching from home now do you know that in a day i can get like five thousand naira the person might be telling you only revenue, revenue only, like how much came into the business. They did not remove the profits, they did not remove the expenses, they're just telling you revenue. So when you hear, ah, she made 5,000 naira in a day, you will now go and run, carry, go and rent shop and start frying chin chin. That is when your eyes will now clear, it will end in tears, okay? So another thing I want to add, when I tell people that 
I've not started making money from YouTube. People are like, ah, is YouTube not paying you? Yes, YouTube is paying me, okay? But when I calculate how much I invested in YouTube, how much I keep investing in my YouTube channel, they don't start paying me, okay? For instance, how much did I buy my camera? How much did I buy my stand? How much did I buy, you know, some things that I used to do my to do my YouTube, even though some of them were bought for me by my husband. I need to calculate how much it is. For instance, my husband bought me a new laptop. My, my old laptop was giving me issues. So he bought me a new laptop as a gift. So the gift, so the surprise gift anyway, very, you know, very thoughtful surprise gift. And I really appreciate him for it. But my dear, I had to go and calculate how much is the laptop, almost $700 or so, or I can't remember how much. If I remove it from what I, how much I've made on YouTube, the money don't go, okay? And that's because even though it was a gift, I am now using it for YouTube. If I wasn't using it for YouTube, the gifts would have been there. So there's wear and tear that comes with using something, okay? So you need to factor those things in. So don't just say, ah, but it was a gift now. Why do I need to subtract it from my income? You need to subtract it from your income. I subtract our data from my income, even though I upload videos with my, um, um, my mobile data, so I pay for it. The Wi-Fi in the house, sometimes I use it to do some things on my, to reply comments, you know, to do some things on my YouTube. So I also factor that one in to how much I make on YouTube, okay? So yeah, I just thought that to say, when you consider all these things, go and look at the business that you are currently doing. Whatever business you are doing, whatever investment you are currently doing, go and look at it and make the appropriate deductions so that you will know exactly how much you are really making from this business it might not be accurate to a t it might not be accurate you know to the decimal point or whatever but you know so an extent you can tell exactly how much you are making and see if it's worth your time or not okay so another reason why people exaggerate figures or exaggerate how good their business is is because they want you to join them yes let me shatter this table if you are here I me, mean, I'm, well, I'm not on this table, but my colleagues in the network marketing business are on this table, okay? So, people that do Ponzi, now, Ponzi and network marketing are two different businesses. Well, Ponzi is not a business to me, okay? Ponzi is a total scam, is a scam, left, right, and center, all those, them, MMM and co, those are Ponzi schemes and, you know, they are really, really bad. Then, network marketing, on the other hand, it's a legit business, okay? It's a legit business, so things like... You see this legit company behind you, so things like Longridge, things like Oriflame, um, I think Agano Gold, Forever Living, Mary Kay, um, this one starts from A, Avon, Avon in America, yeah? So those are network marketing businesses, there's a company behind it, like there's actual products, actual company that you can go and verify and investigate, okay? Now, one thing that people in these two industries have in common, and yes, even though I'm in the network marketing industry, I'm going to say it. One thing they have in common is that they try to exaggerate, you know, the kind of money they make or the kind of things that is involved in the business so that you will join them so that they can make more money. Yeah, positive people are number one in that. Network marketing are number two in it, okay? So now when I was a network marketer, I told myself that I'm not going to lie to anybody or exaggerate. In fact, if you tell me to open my bank account, I will open it and show you so that you will know what you are going into because I know I'm not going to do it forever. So that the day I stop it, you won't say that lady that took my money. No, I told you the truth. You decided to do it by yourself, okay? Because in network marketing, there's a lot of work involved. Tell people there's work involved though. This is a business. This is not a joke. This is not Ponzi. This is not a MMM. This is not supposed money to and collect money tomorrow. No, this is a, this is a business on its own. Okay, you have to treat it like a if you don't treat it like a business, then it's going to treat you like a joke. Okay, so anyway, yeah, that's another reason why people like that's why you should not take people's word for it to do your own research. Okay, now another reason why you should not take people's word for it is because sometimes they they talk from their own perspectives. Okay, now you see someone who is not a good business person, or the person was not diligent enough, or the person not putting the hard work, the person not even putting the work. Or the person made serious mistakes in that business. When you ask them, they tell you, ah, don't do it though. That business does not work. Or the business is not viable. Or the business does not there's no profit though. Don't even go there. Meanwhile, they are only talking from their own perspectives. They're not talking from, you know, it's not reality, okay? It might and it most likely might work differently for you if you apply, you know, the right principles, if you are hardworking, if you do the right things, okay? So that's why you shouldn't take people's word for it. Some people just some people try to devalue a business or to, you know, undervalue it because they themselves did not even see much value in it to start with. They're not really putting in the work. So, yeah. Another reason is that some people might, 
see you like you're too big for that business, okay? <laughs> like, I'm, so I put my seat like, ah, this business is beneath this person. So they'll tell you, no, eh, I only sell chin chin, no. Mm, the business is just there, my dear. Don't even stress yourself. It's just chin chin. The business is not there. Because in their mind, they're like, ah, how would this big woman say she wants to come and start, you know, selling chin chin too with me, okay? So anyway, these are just reasons why I say, don't take people's word for it, okay? Like I said in my first point, do your due diligence, invest in yourself, invest your time, invest your money, read books, okay? Read books. Okay, let me know even like, Sha. I'm not really a book reader, I'm more of a listener. So I can listen to books, I can listen to podcasts, I can listen to YouTube videos. I'm not really a book reader. I'm yet to read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, okay? I'm, re I'm yet to read it, okay? But I heard that the book is very good, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Those are things that you should invest your time and money in so that when you now want to go into, you know, investments, you go into it with your eyes open, okay? Yeah. All right, guys. So, yeah, I think I'm going to end this video here and I'm going to answer your questions in the next video, okay? So, tomorrow, I am going to upload part two of this video. So, stay tuned, guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? Bye.